Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pastor Beneza and welcome to the Word for the Week, where we pick an excerpt from a devotional that lines up with something that we've learned on Sunday or sometime in the past week or even subsequently. And then we go through it so you're able to meditate and keep your heart in the Word of God. Today we'll be reading from Acts chapter 8 from verse 14 to 23 and we'll read through the message version. When the apostles in Jerusalem received the report that Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John down to pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Up to this point, they had only been baptized in the name of the Master Jesus. The Holy Spirit hadn't yet fallen on them. Then the apostles laid their hands on them and they received, they did receive the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the apostles by merely laying on hands, confer the spirit. He pulled out his money, excited, and said, Sell me your secret. Show me how you did that. How much do you want? Name your price, Peter said. To hell with your money, and you along with it. Why? Why? That's unthinkable. Trying to buy God's gift? You will never be part of what God is doing by striking bargains and offering bribes. Change your ways and now ask the master to forgive you for trying to use God to make money. I can see this is an old habit with you. You reek with money last. And we, as I said, it was Acts 8, 14 to 23. The title of our message this week is the state of your heart. Remember the word of God says your heart is the soil in which the seed is sown. Operating in the things of the spirit requires that our hearts are kept right. That's the principle of the seed and the soil. That is our motives, our agenda. All these things must be kept pure. Because the Bible says it's the pure in heart that will see God. Your state of your heart is the reflection of the content of God's character that is revealed to you. Remember the Holy Spirit dwells in and operates from your heart, which is your spirit, you can say. And he is very aware of your inner thoughts, convictions, and intentions. You cannot deceive him. You can deceive everyone else, but not him. So a wrong or crooked heart will cause unwillingness on his part of the, of the spirit to confirm any actions or manifest in his fullness in your life. So you see in the story of Simon the Sorcerer, which we just read, the state of his heart made him make a wrong move towards obtaining something that was a gift from God. Sometimes that's how what, what our heart leads us to. Even the good things, because of the content of our heart, we use them for the wrong agenda, for the wrong things. And that stifles the Holy Spirit from manifesting powerfully in our lives. Only those with the right heart will be able to maintain the fullness of the Spirit and overcome the subtle influences of the evil kingdom during these times of great peril. Be careful, the world is moving in the wrong direction. Keep your heart right in these last days. Don't let anyone or anything pressure you into compromising the integrity of your heart. It is very important. God will soon reward your faith. Keep a heart of integrity, a pure heart, a genuine heart, and the Spirit of God will move mightily. Proclaim this with me. Say, I walk by faith, not by sight. I have a pure heart, therefore I partner with the Holy Spirit, and He confirms my actions, and He manifests fullness, His whole fullness in my life. Lord, give me a pure heart to be able to serve you. A heart of integrity. What is the state of your heart? Think about it. See you next week. Bye.